الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر كبيرا والحمد لله كثيرا وسبحان الله وبحمده بكرة وأصيلة أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الناس قد جاءتكم موعظة من ربكم وشفاء لما في الصدور وهدى ورحمة للمؤمنين صدق الله العظيم This is the ayah from Surah Yunus which is ayah number 57 In this ayah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts out by talking to everybody Ya ayuha nas all of you Qad ja'atkum maw'izatun min rabbikum There came to you instruction from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this instruction has healing for you shifa'un lima fi sudur whatever is in your heart so it purifies your heart and when your heart gets purified and you have faith so what it does it becomes hudaw wa rahmatul lil mu'minin it becomes the guidance and it becomes the mercy for who for the believers and now let's go back to the ayah that you've been hearing a lot in the last month Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu Those of you who have believed Kutiba alaykum al-siyamu kama kutiba ala al-ladhina min qablikum la'allakum tattaqoon All of this is for you so that you can gain piety. Now keep these thoughts in your head. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given this book as a guidance for all. Now the next ayah, subhanallah, the next ayah. Qul, O Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Give this message to everybody. Qul, bi fadlillahi, by the fadl, by the bounty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wa bi rahmatihi, and by his mercy, fa bi thalika fal yafrahu. So what you should all do? Be happy. Be happy. It's perfectly fine to be happy and a believer. Okay? It is perfectly fine. Islam is not against happiness. But you need to define the happiness. You need to figure out what is making you happy. What's making you happy? Is it in accordance with Quran and Sunnah or no? That's basically the bottom line. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to be what? Happy. فَلْيَفْرَحُوا Be happy. And not only just happy. فَلْيَفْرَحُ means to rejoice. Rejoice. Be happy from inside. Feel it. Spread it. Show it. Subhanallah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given this month for us to achieve the piety. Once we achieve the piety, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, this is the month at the end of which you must rejoice just like there are other occasions that you must rejoice. Now think about it like this. This whole 29 days or 30 days of fasting is what we call a boot camp. This is a life that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to live anyway the rest of the year. Charity, extra prayers, coming as a community together, this unity. Do you see this unity in the last 29 days? Everybody coming in together, mingling, immense amount of love and unity in the community, standing together. And then for 11 months you forget about it. We forget about it as if there is nothing on the intersection of Highway H and K. Okay? And then after 11 months, you're like, oh, there is a masjid. Okay? And then when people call, they say, okay, what time is Tarawih? No, no, no. What time is Isha? Because Isha is mandatory. Okay? You should be calling to ask, what time is Isha? And you shouldn't just be showing up for Isha. You should be trying to show up for all the prayers that you can make. Now think about it on the weekends. A lot of us are home. In the afternoon, we live maybe one, two, three miles from here, but nobody comes from Zuhr. That's sad. In the Sunday school, as soon as the Sunday school is over, nobody shows up for Zuhr. That's sad. If you can come during Sunday school, if you're home, you can certainly try to stop by. That's perfectly fine. This is the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just come and meet with each other, greet with each other, stop by. It's open all the time. Come for Fajr, come for Zuhr, come for Asr, come for Maghrib, come for Isha. Just come. Don't wait for the Ramadan. So this is the boot camp Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts us through. 
So what happens at the end of the boot camp? You graduate, right? You graduate. So this is your graduation date. Okay? Now the only difference is, usually when there's a graduation, they call somebody to come and speak, right? So I'm the speaker of the day. But the only difference is I'm also graduating today. Which is so unusual. The guy who speaks doesn't graduate that day. But I'm also graduating today. So now, when we graduate, what are we looking for? Work. We're looking for work. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, don't look for work. I already have the paycheck for you, ready. In the hadith, which is muttafaqun alayh, reported by Imam Bukhari and Imam Muslim, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kullu amal ibn Adam lahu illa siyam. All of the good deeds that Adam alayhi salam skates to is for themselves, except for what? Fasting. فَإِنَّهُ لِي It is for me. وَأَنَا أَجْزِي بِهِ And I am the one who will going to reward you. How much I'm not telling you. When will I going to tell you in the Day of Judgment? There is no number to it. 10, 200, 700, 25 times, no number. It is the number that will be disclosed that day. And then when that number will be disclosed, you will be happy. In another hadith, it will be a matter of joys for the person who rejoice for the person who will going to meet his Lord on the Day of Judgment and he will be told of his fasting deeds. SubhanAllah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has this beautiful paycheck over there too. And a lot of paychecks were over here in the form of blessings that you and I know. So the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Man sama Ramadan, the one who fasts during the month of Ramadan, Iman wa ihtisaban, by the belief, and with the good intention of pleasing only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what will going to happen to this person? All of his sins will be forgiven. Not the kabair, not the big one, the saqair, the smaller sins. Which, anyway, we have a lot of them. We have a lot of those. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is a reward that you get over here too. But the, but the thing is this, the intention must be pure. The intention must be pure. In another hadith, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Al-a'malu bin Whatever things you do, your intention matters. Now, it is scary stuff. I don't want to talk about any scary stuff. But just hear me out here. The first three persons to enter Jahannam will be the believers. The first of them will be an alim. Because he never spread the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Go. Because you already got your reward in the world. You have nothing for me over here. The second one, the person who's reciting the Quran beautifully, because his intentions were not pure. He was trying to get wah wah from the people around him. Go into Jahannam. There's nothing for you here. The third one is the shaheed, the one who dies in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even if his intentions are not pure, that's it, done. So intentions are very important. إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالُ بِالنِّيَادِ In another ribaya, whatever you do, your intention matters the most. And when your intention is pure, it brings purity in your heart. It brings truthfulness in your heart. And the Prophet said, إِنَّ الصِّدْقَ يَهْدِي إِلَى الْبِرْ That the truthfulness will guide you to good things. And وَإِنَّ الْبِرَّ يَهْدِي إِلَى الْجَنَّةِ And the good things will going to guide you to Jannah. Isn't that the ultimate joke? Well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَعِدَّتْ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ I have prepared the Jannah for those who attain taqwa. Now in this month, you notice a lot of us were gathering, a lot of us were meeting, sitting with each other, all the differences apart. Now here is a good tiding for these people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, this is reported uh, in many books of hadith. Ibn Hibban reports it, Imam Malik reports it, and said the darja of sahih. And the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, this is hadith al-Qudsi, wajaba, that it is must for me, muhabbati lil mutahabbina fiya, for those people who love each other for my sake. وَالْمُتَجَالِسِينَ فِيهَا They sit among each other in their gatherings for my sake. وَالْمُتَزَاوِرِينَ فِيهَا They are doing these meetups for my sake. وَالْمُتَبَاذِلِينَ فِيهَا And then they are giving in my way for my sake. 
So the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is must for these people who take out all these differences and bring the unity back in themselves and stay together and work with each other. And remember, there's a beautiful ayah in the Quran, beautiful ayah in the Quran, which what I did, I set that ayah as a theme ayah when I give the second khutbah on the Jum'ah. And that is our theme ayah on which from the Quran we are collecting all the ayahs from Surah Al-Baqarah all the way to Surah Al-Nas where it talks to what to do, what not to do. How to become a better person. And this ayah, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Sibghat Allah, the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The literal meaning is the color. When you blend yourself, if we are all colored in that way, Sibghat Allah, wa man ahsanu min Allahi sibgha. What color is better than, what way is better than the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And all of you who believers, wa nahnu lahu abidun. Submit, submit. And then see the beauty of the submission. When everywhere you go, you see similar colors, similar variety, similar attitude, the goodness, the beauty of heart. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, all of you people who love for my sake, I have a special reward for you on the day of judgment. On the day of judgment, it will be so hot and there will be no shade. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, on that day, on Yawm Al-Qiyamah, I will call upon Ayn Al-Mutahabbuna Bi Jalali Where are those people who loved each other for my sake? Now think about it. We get up on that day. SubhanAllah, among everybody sitting there, we get up and we start walking. And then we go towards that call. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Al-Yawma Udhilluhum Fi Zilli Yawma La Zilla Illa Zilli This is the day I will put them in my shade when there is no shade but my shade. SubhanAllah, right? This is beauty of loving each other for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then, the shaitan was chained, got out last night, right? I hope nobody is going out to watch movies tonight because that's the first thing Muslims do. Buy movie tickets, concerts. Okay, so, the shaitan said to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَبِعِزَّتْ وَعِزَّتِكَ لَا أَبْرَحُوا أُغْوِيَ عِبَادَكَ مَا دَامَتْ أَرْوَاحُهُمْ فِي أَجْسَادِهِمْ As long as their souls are in their bodies, I will keep misguiding them. And look at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's response. فَقَالَ وَعِزَّتِي وَجَلَالِي لَا أَزَالُ أَغْفِرُ لَهُمْ مَسْتَغْفَرُونِي I will keep forgiving them if they keep asking, asking for forgiveness. SubhanAllah, right? I'll keep forgiving them if they keep asking for forgiveness. Here is a good tiding for all of us from the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ wa sallam. أَهْلُ الْجَنَّةِ عِشْرُونَ وَمِئَةُ صَفٍ The people who will enter the Jannah, they will be in 120 rows. Samanuna minha min hadi al ummah. Eighty of them will be from this ummah. Subhanallah. Wa arbaunna min sa'ir al umam. And all the ummah of the previous prophets will only be in the forty of them. Subhanallah. Two third for this ummah. And over fifty percent of the Jannah will be filled with this ummah. Subhanallah. This is the ummah that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam talks about and says in another revival reported by Imam Tabrani, Al-Jannatu hurrimat ala al-anbiya'i hatta adkhulaha. No prophet will enter the Jannah. The Prophet said, until I enter the Jannah. Wa hurrimat ala al-umami hatta tadkhulaha ummati. And no ummat will enter the Jannah until unless my ummat enters the Jannah. The last of them all will enter the first of them all. SubhanAllah. So we will be enjoying the beauties of Jannah way before the others will even start entering them. So, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, kutiba alaykum as siyamu kama kutiba ala ladheena min qablikum, la'allakum tattaqoon. Entering the Jannah, inna al-muttaqeena fi jannati wa ayyoon. Allahu Akbar, these people who have been pious will be on that day in the gardens. Udhuluha bi salamin aminin. From everywhere there will be calls that enter the Jannah in peace, in security. And on that day, on that day, this is the beauty of that place. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take out all the evil things from your heart anger, animosity, anything, cunningness, anything, bukhl, anything that is ill 
will be taken out from your ikhwana you will be made real real brothers ala sururin mutaqabilin you will be having the meetings over there too sitting on the couches talking with each other subhanallah subhanallah continue to have those things over there and then fi jannatin na'im and these are the jannah where there will be the blessings of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and among all the other blessings Right now I'm talking to the people on this floor, not on that floor, okay? Hurun Ain. Right? Probably heard about Hur, right? Hurun Ain. The beautiful eye. Beautiful woman, right? The likeness of pearls well protected. As if they were rubies and coral. Beauty. At its height. Then the woman asked, okay. What is in it for me? Right? There was this alim, a scholar who did a little survey between men and women. And then when the survey was concise, men were having, you know, four or five choices, variation here and there. Woman, uh, two minutes. I want a little bit more, two minutes. This is a variation of choices. So this is different genders, different thought process. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created both of them. So do you think he doesn't know who he created? Ala ya'lamu man khalaq. So here's the ayah from the Quran that holds all the blessings. Walakum fiha ma tashtahi anfusukum. In it you will find anything that your soul desires. Walakum fiha ma tadda'oon. And in it you will find whatever you will request or wish. So your request will be fulfilled, your desires will be fulfilled. Doesn't matter what they are. And no ill desire will be desired in Jannah. On top of that, just remember that. Some of the people in their jokes, they say, oh, what are we going to be asking for this and that? This is the bottom line. Remember? Utkhuluha fi salamin. Aminin. Enter in it with all the beauties of goodness. No ill feelings, no ill thoughts, no crazy jokes that we joke around these days will be over there. It will going to be in utmost respect. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared this Jannah ke, that no eye has seen what the beauty of the Jannah will be like. No ear has ever heard the beauty, the, what the beauty of the Jannah would be like. Not a single glimpse of it has ever gone across your thought process. For those of you who know the Arabic language, you understand khatar. Khatar is the smallest, smallest, smallest thought that occurs in your head, the very first one, and it only lasts a fraction of a second and goes. That's called khatar. Okay? Even, not even that. Forget about having a long thought process. <coughs> now, here is, here is another beautiful thing for all of us. The wife of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam Umm Salama radiyallahu anha asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya Rasulullah, Nisa'u dunya afdalu am huri al-ayn. Are the women from here that will enter the Jannah better? Or the huri al-ayn who is already in the Jannah? Look at the question. Beauty of the question, right? Qala, bal nisa'u dunya afdalu min al huri al-ayn. The women of this world that will enter the Jannah will be better is better than the Hurul Ain. And the wife asked, how come? And the Prophet said, Bi salatihinna, wa siyamihinna, wa ibadatihinna. Because these women prayed, they fasted, they worshipped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with all the khatarat and the schemes of shayateen. They protected themselves. So of course they are higher. And these women will enter the Jannah, then Allah will put light on their faces and silk on their bodies. And these women will say, we are the women who will stay forever and we will never die. These are the women that will enter the Jannah from this world. We are the women who will always remain in comfort and we will never undergo difficulty. We are the women who will stay and will never leave. Listen, we are happy. Oh my God. <laughs> right? For those of you who are married, what is she saying? We are happy. And we will never become sad. Allahu Akbar. Glad tiding to those men for whom we are and who are for us. Subhanallah. Reported by Imam Tabrani. So, the bottom line, the last thing, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam said, reported by Sahih Muslim, Inna. 
لِكُلِّ قَوْمٍ عِيدًا For every, every people, set of people, they have their own way of festivities. وَهَذَا عِيدُنَا And this is our Eid. So, قُلْ بِفَضْلِ اللَّهِ وَبِرَحْمَتِهِ فَبِذَلِكَ فَلْيَفْرَحُوا So be happy and enjoy it with family and friends and neighbors and communities and feel the goodness in your heart and spread the goodness around all year round so that when we enter the Ramadan the next year we are better people than what we are now. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم.